Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Bala World launched its incubation hub at its Bala Park head office in Johannesburg last month to assist small business suppliers and companies operating in its value chain in overcoming challenges, including market access, finance and skills that commonly impact on small, medium-sized and micro-enterprises. David Oliveira tells us more. The Sierra Cooler Incubation Hub aims to provide financial support as well as enterprise development, skills transfer, supplier development and marketing opportunities to its small business suppliers. In line with our values of teamwork, we have partnered with GTI and Standard Bank. We believe as Palo that together we can do more. Small businesses, we should be an area of focus if we are to stimulate growth, increase employment, reduce poverty and empower the country's citizen to thrive and reduce their dependency on social welfare. These individuals require a lot of things to thrive. Some of those are, in, as a way of example, funding, mentorship and skills development. The hub will support its existing black-owned SMMEs while providing support for eligible SMMEs within its larger value chain. Barlow World has provided support for 42 companies and aims to increase the number of incubates to 120 by 2022. During the launch, speakers often highlighted the need for partnerships to grow the economy and address South Africa's triple challenge of poverty, inequality and unemployment. Barlow World Circular helped me and Stars at Cleaning Services to deliver on creating jobs. And I have no doubt that these partnership will continue creating more jobs. Daza Cleaning Services currently employs about 371 people. Gauteng Premier David Makura pointed out at the launch that business incubation hubs were important for the development of SMMEs and transformation of the local economy. If we were to just have 10, 10 big companies, big corporates in South Africa, uh, and I'm saying just over the next two years, if we were just to have 10 corporates that were to to replicate what Balo World is doing, we would have a huge impact on the transformation of our economy. <laughs> Siakola is a groundbreaking initiative that you have undertaken in partnership with uh, our National Department of Trade and Industry. The incubation hub is a very, very important development. You have been, you have been doing this work but to have a place, a physical place, called the Incubation Hub as part of the ecosystem is a very, very important initiative because uh, it's the place, that place where uh, SMMEs, people who are doing things that sometimes they are not sure if they are on the right track, but when they see others who say, we used to be there, yeah, uh, in the same environment, it gives them a great deal of confidence. The world of business is very, very harsh, uh, especially the world of small business. So Siakula Incubation Hub represents for, for us um, <clears throat> in the Gauteng Provincial Government what we call a second wave of empowerment. We're entering a phase where we say that government must do something through public procurement, but big business must do a lot more. 80% of our economy, South African economy, 80% of this, this economy is essentially in the private sector. So even if government was to do 100%, it will only contribute 20% to transformation and empowerment. To date, Barlo World Sia Cooler's incubation hub has assisted its incubatees to create about 670 jobs. Other news making headlines, localization a key policy tool for South Africa and South Africa's institutions need to be protected and strengthened. Localization is an important policy tool for industrial development in South Africa and will assist in growing the economy and the manufacturing sector. Localization is an extremely important policy tool for industrial development. And I want to elaborate a little bit on that. Through localization, we take decisions and starting with government, we take decisions that we will prefer to buy from locally manufactured sources. And this is a tool that has been deployed by almost every country in the world at any time that has actually embarked on and succeeded in industrializing. It's an extremely widely deployed policy tool. 
even those who preach to others that they shouldn't be using it are in fact using it in one shape or form themselves. And I think that we are unashamed in South Africa and unashamed as government in saying that this is an extremely important policy tool. If we take decisions that we will prefer products that are locally made, we are saying that we will support the enterprises that are actually producing those products in our own economy and that we are creating jobs or sustaining jobs for people who are active in our own economy. South Africa's institutions have either been forsaken or deliberately weakened for political expedience, with the state transformation becoming so politicized that economics is almost just about political power, former Deputy Finance Minister Mr. B.C. Jonas has said. We must instead focus on the institutional frameworks that we have so carefully constructed as part of our democracy and which are designed to keep us in check by ensuring that uh, the rules of the game and democratic accountability holds firm. And I fear, I think, that increasingly I'm getting a sense that we're increasingly failing to have sustainable institutions that go beyond political regimes. We're building institutions that mirror the, incum the incumbent. And that probably it's a very interesting fault line that's beginning to develop in our democracy. And that's something that I think um, in the national conversation we need to talk about. You need a judiciary that goes beyond who is in power. You need uh, a reserve bank that, that will be there even whoever is in power and is protected and is serving national interest and a whole range of these institutions. But I, I am afraid that I think we're at a point where um, political short-termism is beginning to be transported into our own institutions and therefore undermining their p potential to serve a national interest and a national agenda. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.